Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 498, Diagonal Traverse. Given an M by N matrix mat, return an array of all the elements of the array in a diagonal order. So if we see this matrix here, we want to traverse starting at the top left. We want to go 1, then 2, 4, then 2, 5, 3. 6, 8, and 9. So what our solution here would be would be 1, 2, 4, 7, 5, 3, 6, 8, and 9. So looking at this problem, it's really easy to figure out intuitively what you need to do, right? You start here, then you go as far as you can go, then you reverse, then you go down the diagonal, then you reverse, then you go up the diagonal, then you go this way and that way. Where this problem is a little bit tricky is more of like the technical implementation of just making sure that you're going in the right direction and how you actually reset things. Because notice here, you go up, but then you exceed the bounds. So you need to reset yourself down here. Then you go this way, you exceed the bounds in two ways, right? You need to reset yourself um, first to the left, and then you need to go up. And then here you need to go, you're gonna, once you, process this three, like the next step will try to take you here, but you need to go down two and then left. And then here you need to do the same thing. So it's a little bit tricky in that case, but once you figure out what you need to do, it's really easy to kind of put an algorithm together. And essentially what we want to do is we want to start at the top left and we're going to try going up one and to the right one uh, until we're outside of the bounds of our matrix. And then what we want to do is simply drop our current um, row down by one because the column will still be valid. The row will be off. Then we want to go down this time because we were going up previously. Then, you know, we're going to go to the down and to the left. We're going to hit the four. The four is going to try to go down into the left. But obviously now we'll be outside of the bounds. So we need to reset. So now our row will be fine, but the column is not. So we need to add one to the column. And then we're going to proceed again. So going up, we go to the right and up. So we go right and up, right and up, right and up. But now our row and our column is invalid. So we need to drop the rows by two and the column to the left by one. And then we do the same. We're now going left. So we're going to go down and left, down and left. But now again, we're in the invalid location. So we need to actually add two to the columns and one to the row to get us back to the correct space. And then at this nine, we actually finish because we'll have processed all the elements. So that's what we want to do. If we're going up, we go up and to the right. If we're going to the left, we go down and to the left. And then we need to make sure that we reset our boundaries correctly once we actually leave the bounds of our grid, because if we try to access those indices, we're going to get index errors and we don't want that. So let's go over to the code editor and see how we might code this up. It's really not that complicated. We just have those few edge cases where once we leave the bounds, we need to make sure we reset them correctly. And there's going to be a few cases where we actually need to reset our boundary by, you know, more than two elements because we are exceeding both the columns and the rows. Sometimes the column or the row is fine in this case, in this case, and we just need to adjust one of them. But in certain cases like here and here, um, both the column and the row are off, so we need to adjust both of them. And sometimes the row will need more adjustment. Sometimes the column will need more adjustment. So let's go to the code editor and see how we're going to implement this. Okay. We're in the code editor. Let's code this up. The first thing that we want to do is actually define some helper variables, help us keep track of the number of rows and columns in our matrix. So we're going to say rows is going to equal to the length of the matrix. And the number of columns is going to be equal to the length of the matrix, uh, that first index. So that's going to give us the rows and the columns. And now we're going to need a result to basically store our uh, output here, right? We have this res. So we're going to have an empty list and we need to know what our current position is. So we're going to say current row equals the current column. And this is going to be zero. Obviously we start at 0 0.00. zero. Um, that's going to be our starting position. And in the beginning, we're going to be going up. So let's have a variable to keep track of which direction we're going. So we're going to say going up. And initially, this is going to be set equal to true. Now what we want to do is we want to basically process our matrix, uh, you know, I guess diagonally, or traverse it diagonally until we've processed all the elements. So we're going to say while 
the length of our result does not equal to rows times columns, because remember that's gonna be the total number of elements on our matrix, then we need to keep processing. So there's two cases, right? We can either be going up or we can be going down. So let's handle the going up case first. So we're gonna say if we're going up, then what we wanna do is remember that while we're within the bounds of our matrix, we just wanna be going up and to the right and processing each element. So we're gonna say while the current row is greater than or equal to zero, because remember that when we're processing going up, we're basically moving the row up by one. So we're decreasing it by one. So while the current row is actually greater than or equal to zero, uh, and the current column is less than columns, because remember we're increasing the column by one by going to the right, we're, we basically have you know, room to basically take our elements here. So we're gonna say res.append, whatever the current element is. So we're gonna say mat of whatever the current row and the current column is. And then what we need to do is we want to say the current row needs to get added by one and the current, uh, whoops, sorry, the current row needs to be decreased by one and the current column needs to be incremented by one. Now what we want to do is we, at this point, when the while loop ends, we will be outside of the bounds of our array, right? So if we start here and we go up into the right, we'll be basically here. If you imagine like there was another box here, then this is where we would be. But obviously this is outside of the bounds of our grid. So what we need to do is actually reset ourselves. So here, our position in terms of the column is fine, right? This column is, is a valid column, right? This is column with index one, this is fine. The row is the problem, right? If this is row zero, then being up here is technically row minus one, which is not allowed. So we actually just need to increase the row by one um, and that would bring us back into the grid. So we're gonna say um, if the basically, uh, we need to drop the, the row here by one in that case, if the case is that our column is actually outside, so if our column, you know, for this case where we go seven to five to three, we'd end up here, this is actually going to equal to the, you know, this, this calls here, right? It's gonna equal to three, because uh, this is column zero, this is column one, this is column two, and then out here would be column three, um, which is not valid, right? In this case, we need to drop our uh, rows by two, and this is going to be the other case, right? We could have the case where the column is fine. It's just the row that needs to change. Sometimes the row and the column will be wrong, in which case we need to handle that. So in the case where the column is actually outside, that means that this is the case where we need to drop the rows by two and the column by one, right? So we're going to say if cur call equals to calls, we're going to say that the current column needs to get decremented by one. So remember, if we're out here, we need to move the column by one and then we need to move the rows up by two. So we're gonna say cur row plus equals to two, oops, plus equals to two. Otherwise, we have the case where the column is fine, it's just the row that needs to get added. So we're gonna say cur row plus equals, to, plus equals to one. And that's all we need to do. Now that we finished going up, we need to reset our going up function to now be false because now we're going down. Okay. So that was going up. Now let's do the same thing for going down, uh, except for we just need to modify our direction of travel a bit. So we're gonna say while cur row is less than rows because now we're going down, right? And the current column is greater than or equal to zero. We're gonna say res.append mat of cur row cur call. We're gonna say we need to decrement um, the current column by one, right? Cause we're going, um, you know, when we're going down, we're going to the left, right? So the column gets decremented by one and the row gets increased by one. So we're going to say cur row plus equals to one. And that's going to be our while loop there. Very similar to this one, although a little bit different in the statement for the while loop and also how we increment our cur row and current column. Now we need to do the same thing that we did up here. Um, to basically reset ourselves once we violated the bounds of our array here. So for example, when we're going down, in this case here, at the eight, remember we go down and to the left, so we'd go down one and to the left. So technically we'd be here, which is wrong. 
because now we're in the wrong place. So we need to reset ourselves by two. So we need to move the columns from here to then here and then move the row up so that we end up at this nine. So otherwise, if we just have an easy case where with this four, we go out here, all we need to do is move the column by one and we'll be in the right place. The rows are okay. So we're gonna say if the current row equals to rows, basically we've exceeded uh, our boundary. We're gonna say the current column needs to move up by two and the current row needs to get decremented by one. Otherwise, what we want to do is the current column needs to get incremented by one and that's it. So remember that at the end, we need to reset which direction we're going. Uh, otherwise, we'll get you know the wrong answer here. And at the end, let's just make sure my indentation is right. We just need to return res. So I just want to double check that we have all of our things right here. So the current row minus one in this case, plus one, yeah, so this is minus one, plus one, yeah, that's right, this is fine, this is curl row minus one, uh, sorry, the column minus one, the row plus one, okay, that looks good, let's just run this, make sure that uh, cur, oops, cur row, whoops, yeah, that's why I run it once, and cool, it looks like it works, let's just submit this, make sure it does, and it does, awesome, so, what is the time and space complexity for our algorithm here? Well, obviously we need to process every single tile in this matrix. So the time complexity here is gonna be big O of N, right? We need to touch every single tile. We do it so once and we parse its value. So that's gonna be big O of N. Space complexity wise, if you wanna count the result, it's gonna be big O of N because we basically just need to store all the values from our previous matrix. Uh, so that's gonna be big O of N. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be big O of 1 because sometimes you don't want to count the result. So we're going to say big O of n if counting result as space, otherwise big O of 1 because we don't actually define any other variables um, that are anything other than constant uh, space allocation. So time complexity, big O of n, space complexity, big O of n if you want to count the result as space, uh, otherwise it's going to be big O of 1. So that's how you solve diagonal traverse. A little bit tricky with these kind of resetting of your boundaries, uh, given the little edge cases you have. Um, but luckily there's only like two cases you have to take care of. Uh, and it's really not that bad once you kind of figure out what you need to do. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you wanna see more content like this to help you prepare for your on-site interviews, please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of videos and I plan to make a whole lot more. So subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.